Hello, I am the many talented Mr. Jefferson, and I haven't made a PAL World video in like seven months. I haven't even had the game installed since February, but while it's a fun game, it's also quite an unfinished game, and I would rather wait for some kind of a major update instead of playing the current state of the game and just getting bored of it before anything real has been added. Plus, I have a ton of other games to play and stream on my channel. Like Trading Card Game Simulator, this thing is goddamn cardboard crack and uh, I can't stop playing it and people won't stop watching it, which means even if I didn't want to play it anymore, I still couldn't stop playing it because goddamn, I like getting new subscribers. Fancy that. The last time I made a video about PAL World was in response to a litany of allegations that PAL World had stolen assets from Nintendo, but none of those allegations seemed to hold any water. The AI redrawing Pokemon allegation was just a total work of fantasy. I pulled up the most frequently mentioned PALs in Pokemon to see how similar they really looked side by side, and I even tried to search the common info influences for both designs, like how Anubis from Pokemon looks suspiciously like Conan the Barbarian. Uh, Here we go. This is Wulu's design. Bullshit. All right, this thing has four legs. This thing has two, and it's got two arms. This thing has braids. This thing does not. These eyes are not the same as these eyes. This guy does not have a mouth. This guy does not have a nose. Oh, look, they both have horns. Guess what? Some sheep have horns. That's a feature of a sheep. Both of them are round. Do you know what else is round? Cotton balls. Holy shit. His ears are up here. His ears are down here. Uh, they're facing different ways. They don't look the same. There is no goddamn way on God's green earth. Oh, look, he's, he's even got some, uh, some little decorations down here. There's no God. There's no, no fucking way on God's green earth that AI generation is going to get this image from this image. It's, not. It's not going to happen. And if this, if this is the best evidence, if this is the most damning evidence. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? Look, he's got circles for ears. This has, thing has actual ears. Uh, the mane has an outline on it. This guy does not. He's got different colored legs. Oh, look, he's got multicolored legs. The legs look different on the back. Um, this guy, he's got all four back paws. This guy has two forward paws, two back paws. Um, the eyes are, are different. There's no decoration on the forehead. You're going to fucking tell me AI came up with this shit? Based on the other design? No. No. <clears throat> Guess what? These guys are both modeled after, I want to say, foxes. No wonder they fucking look similar. This is a humanoid fox. This is a humanoid fox. The similarities end there. This guy has a clearly, like, Egyptian um, uh, thing going on. This might be... This looks more like Conan the Barbarian kind of shit. Like, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily Egyptian in, in design, but this guy definitely is. It's like... How, at what point do you give it up? Yeah. So, you know, there's your smoking gun, guys. Oh, case, case closed. Oh, yeah, you know, the, the AI are generated game. Not. If, if there was any, 
any sli the slightest hint of actual copyright infringement, Nintendo would have shut this fucking game down yesterday. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's running with this shit. Um, pal, like pal, Ro like all the titles are just clearly Power World. Um, what the fuck is it? Power World plagiarism. And then you go watch the video, and then the person's like, Nah, bruh. Nah. And, of course, they are both anthropomorphic jackals because they are both based on the Egyptian jackal god Anubis. And, of course, the reason Nintendo didn't file a lawsuit about character designs is because Nintendo lawyers must agree with me that these designs, while similar, are legally distinct. And if they weren't, this game would have been shut down on day one. Because... We all know Nintendo don't fuck around. Well, here we are seven months later and Nintendo has finally decided to sue Pocket Pair and I had an interesting interaction with the channel JadePG where I pointed out that he used Anubis as an example of why Nintendo should be suing for character design and why that is a terrible example, just like I stated above, and I made a conjecture that, if anything, they are probably suing over the Pokeball and the capture mechanics. And I got called a Pal World Stan, because when you do not have a valid counter argument, it really is best just to pepper in some random insults. I also find it hysterical that he went back and rewrote his replies to make himself look better. These are not the original Jade PG replies, because... This is a person who legitimately spelled theirs with a five. And then thought, I showed him and hit the send button. Luckily, my YouTube inbox preview preserved this reply in all of its glory before the replies were heavily edited. Which really just goes to prove my point that if you believe pals are copyright infringing plagiarized Pokemon, you might also be the kind of person who legitimately cannot tell the difference between the word there and five class, which I would say may invalidate your argument somewhat. Also, I would like to point out that you don't have to be a judge to understand how copyright law works. It's not like somebody becomes a judge and then they suddenly gain all knowledge of law at that very moment. I watch actual lawyers who practice actual copyright law discuss the viability of these specific claims actually and I also tend to watch a lot of Legal Eagle, the copyright attorney, because he's both entertaining and I enjoy boring shit like law discussions and physics videos, too. I'm lame. What can I say? And that leads me to the actual topic of the video. All of that was just a rehash of past events, because what Nintendo is actually suing for are the patent infringements, like throwing a ball. Capturing a monster, storing monsters on PC, and apparently sleeping? They invented sleeping? I don't believe the specific patents Nintendo believes Power World has violated have been stated yet, but it really, it really doesn't matter at this point because the moment this whole thing became about patent infringement instead of character design, Nintendo lost the only court that really matters, and that is the court of public opinion. Nintendo has a perfect track record with their lawsuits, but that does not mean that they can't lose just because they never have. This lawsuit may wind up costing Nintendo much, much more than they could recover by winning a lawsuit, however, uh, and I'm not even confident they will win this lawsuit because of a very, very specific choice that Nintendo has made in the past involving the Pokemon Company, and I believe this will give Pocket Pair exactly what they need to win, which is something I will address later. 
Pokemon fans have been disappointed by the current generation of Pokemon games and the general lack of innovation. So when the lawsuit turned out to not be about character designs, which is what the fan base would be like 100% behind, despite the almost certainty of failure because they're legally distinct, but instead of being about characters, it was about gaming mechanics. And that immediately generated outrage because it brought up memories of loading screen games, the Nemesis system in Shadows of Mordor, and other instances where one company patented a really interesting concept and then sat on it just to prevent other developers from putting similar concepts into their games. And they either didn't use those patents at all, or rarely ever used those patents. There were exactly two Shadows of Mordor games, and you know what? They were not as good as people seem to remember they were. Namco also used loading screen games, like, one time in a Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi game, I think. Which means there was little to no reason to patent these innovations other than to stifle competition. This pisses off fans, and the fans buy video games. Therefore, this can financially hurt Nintendo. When I stream, I like to browse the Steam store to see if anything cool pops up, and I have noticed a huge trend of indie developers innovating on old game designs. I'll make a montage of new games, which is probably already playing, that are very clearly based on beloved classics and innovate on those old game genres, which the AAA developers have absolutely abandoned because they don't understand that genres don't go out of style. Sea of Stars is clearly an homage to the classic Super Nintendo Chrono Trigger, and it's so much of a tribute to Chrono Trigger that the people who made Chrono Trigger said that if they were going to make a sequel, they would take inspiration from Sea of Stars. I just saw the trailer for a game that looks exactly like Sunset Riders, but new, which was also on the Super Nintendo. It's a game that I actually doubt anyone under the age of 30 would even remember, but it was innovative and I really liked it, so I'm really happy to see somebody else taking inspiration from that old game to make something similar, but also entirely new. I can't count the number of times that I've been watching a game trailer on stream and said, hey, this is just this specific older game. But I do remember the last time I said that, and it was about Death Sprint 66, which looks like SSX Tricky combined with the movie The Running Man, which is awesome because EA Games hasn't made a fucking SSX Tricky game in forever, and they haven't brought Tricky over to the PC, so it's nice that I have a potential alternative to this game I used to enjoy, which is why I bought Death Sprint 66 while typing this. I just really, really want to try it out. To drive my point home that popular genres never go out of style, Shadowgate. Shadowgate! Just got a sequel on PC. Fucking Shadowgate! Which came out 27 years ago, is still popular enough to warrant a sequel on PC. And it would be a shame if all of these other games just weren't allowed to exist because they were too similar in game mechanics to older games that I loved to play. What if you had to wait 27 years between sequels for every game that you like because some jackass filed a patent for a game mechanic that they have never ever intended on using again, or even worse, a game mechanic you will never ever ever get to experience because it does not even exist on your gaming platform of choice. And that's where I think Nintendo is the most vulnerable. I believe the first avenue of attack is for Pocket Pair to flood the zone and show that these patents are either too broad or are in an attempt to claim something that already existed prior to the patent filing. Quoting from the University of Washington School of Law page on the importance of patents, it states that invention must be new and inventive, 
over conventional products and services already in the market on the date of filing. I would argue that throwing a ball is neither new or innovative, that the arc of the ball bounce off of an object is not new or innovative. I would use examples of every game in which a ball is thrown to prove my point. I would argue that showing the percentage of success is not new or innovative and or inventive and show every instance I could of someone using VATS in Fallout or attacking an enemy in XCOM, I would argue that a three count is not new or inventive. And I would showcase instances of every single wrestling game where a ref is doing a three count during a pin or racing games with a three count to start the race. I would also show every instance in which a creature was captured and stored inside of a device of some sort, using examples such as the genie from Aladdin, the Xenobites, and the puzzle box from Hellraiser, Ark Survival Evolved has cryopods, and any game that has any kind of a mount in it, which again, Ark is a prime example of, mostly because Ark is actually one of the games that Pocket Pair has specifically stated that it used for inspiration. I would use all of this to show that these patents are neither new nor innovative nor inventive, but I would also argue that there can be no damages claimed by Nintendo because Nintendo has made the very, very specific choice to have never released a single Pokemon game on the PC, and therefore the patents they have cannot apply to a market in which they have never taken part in, and have never stated plans to enter. They have not, not once, since the release of Pokemon in 1996, released a game on PC, which means that they have willingly excluded themselves from that specific market, and I would argue that Nintendo is violating the intended purpose of patents, and that is to protect innovation, but it is instead using the law to stifle innovation, which is the very opposite of the intent of patent law, and that they are doing so in a market in which they have never, ever intended to enter and that the patents themselves are based on game mechanics that are neither new nor innovative, but are so basic to have been included in two numerous examples to count in games that were released prior to the filing of Nintendo's patents. And then I would bring the argument back to those new retro games which I had mentioned previously. The indie devs innovating on retro game mechanics because while Nintendo has refused to sell its games on PC, it has also greatly benefited from innovations made in the PC market based off of game mechanics found in old intellectual properties such as the immensely popular Shovel Knight, which started in early access on Steam so long ago I think it was actually still called Greenlight, and that very clearly takes influences from game mechanics seen in DuckTales on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Shovel Knight is now a game that is being sold on the Switch. Broforce is basically Contra, but with popular action heroes. And that is also being sold on the Switch. In fact, so many of these PC to Switch ports are made by indie developers innovating on retro gaming because the games tend to have smaller install sizes and low graphics requirements, which makes them ideal for the underpowered Switch, and yet Nintendo seeks to stifle the very innovation that has directly benefited them financially for years now by suing a developer of a game that exists in a totally different market for game mechanics that are so simple as throwing a ball that they should never have been granted as patents in the first place. But, uh, <laughs> I ain't no judge. I I'm not even a lawyer. I'm not even a simple country lawyer. I know absolutely nothing about Japanese legal systems, but my understanding that these are somewhat universal concepts at play, and understanding the letter of the law might not be as important as I will not be arguing 
my case before any judges. But understanding the intent of the law might just be as valuable for my purposes of making a video. Why there is some chance Nintendo may actually not win despite their track record of never losing. Why this lawsuit hurts innovation and how Nintendo isn't even competing in the same dang market as Pocket Pair. And that no matter what the outcome, Nintendo's already lost in the court of public opinion, which will probably hurt them financially more than they can gain from the lawsuit. I am the many talented Mr. Jefferson, and I am certain of two things. Besides the fact that that is not my natural accent. <laughs> the first is that I want to thank my subscribers, my channel members, and all of my sponsors who have donated to support the channel, either financially or with game donations. The second thing I know for absolute certainty is there has never been a word in the history of the English language that has been spelled with an Arabic numeral. I mean, the fact that one of these things is English and the other one is Arabic should be the first clue that you might actually want to use spell check before you hit the send button on an argument that is meant to in any way persuade anyone that they are in fact a stan. A Pow World stan. Who the fuck even says stan anymore? But whatever. At any rate, until I see you next time. Toodles! Start recording and Nintendo may win the lawsuit, but they already lost the fan base. The following is a non-profit fan base parody. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT are all owned by Funimation, Toei Animation, Fuji TV, and uh <laughs>